Hey, this is Joe with Grow Up Build It, and today I'm going to be talking about Black Eyed Susans. So, this is Rudbeckia herta, common Black Eyed Susan. And uh, this is going to be a complete plant profile on it, so we'll be talking about everything from how to identify it before it blooms, how to germinate and grow it from seed. I'll touch on how to save seeds from it briefly, but it'll be growing conditions, just, you know, wildlife, everything you need to know. Now, there are a lot of other species of Rudbeckia that get called black-eyed Susans that are not. Um, example would be Rudbeckia triloba um, or the perennial black-eyed Susan, Rudbeckia fulgita. Those are great plants. I'll do future videos of those, which I'll update the description once I do. But this video is only going to concern the biennial a common black-eyed Susan that is so prolific across most of North America. So, all right, that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so this is a biennial native to North America. Its native range is just huge. It's so vast. It covers everything from South Florida to Texas all the way north up to the southern provinces of Canada and Maine. Um, it basically calls half the continent its home. It's basically native everywhere east of the Rocky Mountains. Um, and it's prolific. But if, if for growing conditions, it likes to grow in full sun and well-drained soil. Um, and if you give it that, it should get two to three feet tall. And if you want to plant them in a designed way, you can space them one to two feet apart. That should allow them to get fairly full. For soil types, it's very versatile. Um, it can go in like a sandy loam all the way to clay, uh, rocky soil. I mean, I have all of the above uh, in various parts of my yard and it seems to do just fine there uh, as long as the soil drains well so don't grow it in a desert don't grow it in a swamp you should be good this is pretty much the earliest of the rubecchias to flower in my observation it starts in late spring and lasts around a month you can prolong that by deadheading where once a bloom stops you follow the stem down to the leaf on the stalk the next leaf and just cut it there uh, but this is an a very very showy flower that really is versatile um, so it can grow in like slightly dry to slightly moist conditions um, and it's just prolific uh, you know you'll find it uh, basically growing in the wild anywhere like on a roadside ditch to a power line cut abandoned farm fields I mean you name it so it's you know at heart it's really like a prairie plant so it's gonna like full Sun and windy and everything um, and uh, but you know even in more moist conditions like this as long as the roots don't get into the water it should do just fine which it is right next to this little creek um, also I wanted to mention that we do have uh, detailed articles on this and certain like how to grow from seed and all that at our website growupbuilder.com those will be in the those links will be in the description below so uh, feel free to take a look at those if you just want a quick reference uh, later on now I want to note here that you know you're looking at a single plant right now. This is a single plant with like 20 some odd blooms. Um, it's in a little backyard micro prairie that we have, but the competition really isn't like an established meadow. This plant came from seed that was taken from here, and this is a more established meadow prairie whatnot. And you can see like the type of black-eyed susans that grow here only have like five or six blooms as opposed to the 20 you saw, and that's mainly due to competition. Um, you know, if it's all packed together really tight, there's not going to be as much nutrients available, so on and so forth. Now, this plant will self-seed prolifically if it's in disturbed soil. Um, so it can get a little aggressive, but over time it will diminish. As other perennials get bigger and mature, it'll outcompete the black-eyed Susans. I've seen this happen at a power line cut near my own house. Um, one year we had 15, 16 of these, and two, two three years later it was down to like two plants. So um, it, it's kind of an ebb and a flow. Now, this plant is pretty easy to identify um, for the Rebecca species because it's got uh, alternate leaves that are kind of lance-shaped or, you know, spearhead-shaped, lance a lot, um, and they're going to have hairy stalks and hairy stems. Like, that's the key that sets it apart from other ones, and the leaves will never be lobed. Um, here's one of the plants that we've been watching in this video. This is probably three weeks after it emerged in the spring. This was in May, I think. Um, but again, you know, you have those lance-shaped leaves, and the edges might have a little bit of serrations, like you know, not like a fine sawtooth, but big teeth, if anything. But the main thing is the fuzzy leaves, the fuzzy uh, stalks. Um, so, anyways, uh, basically, with this plant, uh, there's a lot of variations that are available. So we've been looking at native species so far, but even those sometimes have freak variations and mutations, like this one, which has a little red sunburst almost around the disc. 
uh, almost looks like the uh, Mexican hat uh, cone flower, kind of pretty cool. But uh, even this year, I randomly bought a pack of seeds at you know uh, some garden store. It was supposed to be a container variety of Black Eyed Susan and um, grew them from seed. And this is first year plants, by the way, that you're looking at. What set this one apart was uh, it actually has like a double layer of petals. So I wouldn't want it back in my wildflower area or to see it in the wild because it's obviously, you know, doesn't seem to be all that natural, even though it's probably just a cultivar. But uh, it looks nice where it is. But they're easy to grow from seed and they generally will bloom their first year in my experience if you do it early enough. So let's talk about how to grow these from seed. Um, they're really easy to grow from seed as long as you follow just a couple of key things. The first one is there is no planting depth. Um, the seeds need light to germinate so you kind of just sprinkle them on the soil and then press them in with your thumb. So it's pretty simple. Um, and if it's moist potting soil, it should be fine. Now the other thing is it needs a cold treatment. So you can either go winter sow this uh, seed or you can cold stratify it in the fridge. Now I'll have a detailed article um, down below on how to winter sow and maybe a video in the card on the right uh, at the top as well for milk jugs or six packs for how I do it. But if you're watching this video in June and you wanna grow these, you're probably gonna have to uh, use the refrigerator, which I made a video on how to do that. I'll put a card at the top right so you could cold stratify them using a paper towel in the refrigerator. It's uh, pretty easy to do. I've done it many times. It works great. Um, but you won't have much trouble uh, getting these to germinate as long as the seeds, you know, within a year or two old. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of little seedlings in there. And you can see they're small, round, fuzzy leaves. That's kind of how you identify them. Um, and then uh, here's the container variety seeds. But uh, speaking of seeds, I did make a very detailed video on how to save the seeds cleanly without chaff. Um, a lot of you might have seen it, but if not, go have a look. It's a great way to get your own seed for this because it's an annual or biannual. You're going to need to do this every couple of years probably to grow them, um, unless they self-seed the whole time. And if you just wanted to uh, scatter seed in the wild, uh, you know, if you have a disturbed area with bare soil, you can just scatter it, walk on top of the seed so it gets pressed in, in like the fall, winter, or early spring. And it should germinate as long as there's sunlight, good contact with the soil, and nothing has eaten it. But uh, let's talk about deer and rabbits real quick. Um, in my experience, they're pretty resistant once they're a foot tall or so, but when they're just emerging in the spring or you plant out a seedling, rabbits and deer will eat them. Uh, so be aware of that. Use liquid fence. Um, I swear by it. It works great. Also, it's a great cut flower, and I've noticed that these really last a long time. This picture and this picture are 11 days old in a vase, never changing the water. So they're pretty darn good in my experience for lasting long as far as a cut flower goes. Um, okay, so what kind of wildlife will these bring in? Well, the main pollinators I see are bees, uh, all kinds of bees, anything from the big fat bumblebees down to leaf cutters and even the really tiny, small, like pollinating flies and wasps. Um, they're pretty... Uh, consistent. It, you will see some butterflies on it, but just not that many in my experience. Um, you know, small to medium butterflies are kind of rare. It's, it's mainly bees that I see visiting um, my stuff here. Now, once the seed heads form, you will get goldfinches that will eat the seed, but it doesn't really seem to be a preferred food source for them. Um, you know, sunflowers and echinacea, you need to get the seed heads right away, but these I've collected seeds into January in the wild and I still was able to get, you know, a decent number of seeds off a of seed head. So let's talk about how to landscape with it. Well, the most obvious way is to just make a manicured flower bed like this one, um, like I've done around my mailbox. Um, you're going to have to do, you know, replant these every year or two, which is okay, but um, they can work really well there. Also, what's kind of cool about this is you can grow them in containers if you want to. They will do just fine. Um, and bloom the first year in my experience. Now, the best way for me though is in a wildflower garden of some kind. This is our little backyard micro prairie and it's a flower that you should definitely incorporate. It blooms very quickly. It'll self seed and help fill in bare spots. You know, it's always good to fill in a bare spot with a flower rather than, you know, an undesirable plant. Um, and, you know, it blooms right away and it's showy and I don't know, they just seem to go with. Uh, I mean, these flowers seem to blend in with almost any other flower and look good. Um, or you could go crazy and rewild an area with nothing but this if you wanted to, like what seems to have happened here. But, uh, you know, it's a really awesome plant. It's extremely showy, and uh, um, it just does well pretty much everywhere it goes. Now, let's recap this plant. So to grow it, it likes full sun, well-drained soil. It'll get two to three feet tall. It will self-seed a bit. 
it uh, is easy to grow from seed if you want to, but it does need a cold treatment. Well, that's the main stuff, guys. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I do like trying to help you out and answer those. And check out the links below for deta more detailed info on this species and other Rudbeckia. And give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like this. And thank you guys very much, and have a good one.